All right, welcome back everyone. We are live. I'm sitting down today in Hanoi, Vietnam, once again with Alejandro in Mexico. What's up, Alejandro? Hi, Etienne. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic. So, guys, we have a big, big deal right now, a big thing we have to solve. And that's the fact that we talked recently with people from the academy, students, people that followed our course, the program, uh, people that went through it. And a big thing we see people do wrong is that they have a hard time with the zones, like identifying the zones on the charts, support instance areas. They cannot seem to kind of do it the same way that we do, even though we teach how to do it and stuff. People always have like a different way of doing it. And that's a big problem because of the fact that if you do your zone wrong, chances are your results are going to be very different in the market. So you might place your zone like a little bit different than the ones I have or completely different and your result of trading will be different. So that's a big thing. We want to make sure you guys know how to draw your zones properly. And that's why we're doing this video today, kind of how to explain this. And I've done countless videos in the past on how to do this for like the way I do it myself. But I wanted to bring someone else. I know I've been to the academy before, a student of mine now working with me, doing some awesome stuff to kind of share what he does, the way he looks at his, at his zone and the rules he has to be able to place his zone on the chart mechanically. So you guys can come with the, can come in the chat. I'll, we'll, we'll look at the chat uh, pretty soon. I see a few people there. Alex, Michael, uh, Susan, that's awesome. Something of a sort. Perfect. So guys, you can come in the chat. Let us know if you're watching us live. And we'll kind of go through this. So uh, I'm not sure how to go about this. There's a lot of rules. So I don't know you want to kind of start, kind of explain how you came up with this way of looking at the zone for yourself on the chart. Yes. Well, first of all, uh, at the beginning, I was just doing kind of like what looked OK. And then across the times, uh, I came well in the price action course. It has some rules. And then I also came with other videos of their traders as well as your videos. And I started refining my process. And then I, I, I made myself a process kind of like mixing of all of those. Uh, and then I developed like different levels of process. So one process which is easier for people that are starting. And then after you practice, then you can skip. Well, you can skip the first steps because you are used to looking at those things, and you kind of already integrate them. How you think? Uh, but I, in this case, we are going to go through the whole process, like from beginning to end, of how I do it. And one really important thing that you have said also in other videos in the past is that uh, support and resistance is not a line; it's a zone or an area. So it's not a single price. It's not, uh, let's say, like 1.3. No, that's not the, 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 the level. It's around 1.3. So depending on market volatility or other factors, it could be from 1.301 to uh, 1.299 or something like that, or even wider, right? So that's one important thing to, to note because most people, when they start, they try to look at it as a line. So the price has to go back to that exact point in time uh, or it's not valid, right? While in reality, everything is relative. So we have to do the things as soon. Uh, so that is like the, like the intro to this. If you want, we can go now to some charts uh, or if someone has. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Uh, so, so we'll kind of go, yeah, we'll run the chart soon. I want you guys to comment below in the chat. Tell us if you have any kind of struggle, challenges with looking at zones on chart. If there's something you find difficult, or maybe for you it's like super simple. Let us know in the chat or in the comment below if you're watching the replay of this. And yeah, that's the, that's the thing you kind of point out, which is the fact that you cannot look at only a level, like a 1.515, but you got to look at it as a zone. That's why we'll put some probably boxes in the chart to look at the, the zones as a box as a lower limit, upper limit. And these can be used also to trade. So you can trade in those. You can put those in your algos if you want to get some setup taking at these zones if you want. And that simplifies your life a lot. So yeah, let's go to the chart. And for me, <laughs> the thing is like, I know how to do the zones. I've done them a lot, but I feel like, like now I'm at a point where I can place them, but I have a hard time explaining how to do it sometimes. So that's why I bring someone else to kind of do it, which is awesome. So, yeah, well, I, thing, so as we're saying, analyze chart from scratch. That's awesome. That, that's what we do basically have to go from zero to zones. Yeah, that's the goal of this uh, training. Yeah, that's uh, actually what I'm going to do. I like just started a new like template in MT4, well, layout. 
So the charts you're going to see are going to be just with one indicator, which I will tell you which is. And then from there, we're going to start placing the zones uh, from that. Uh, I also see Far Roach, the day, first time in live chat. Good. Good that you are here with us. It's <laughs> awesome. So let's go ahead with uh, the chart. Yep. I will start the screen share now. And you can let me know if you can see my charts. Uh, yeah. That's also, I would like to know if people watching, if this chart's layout, it's it's OK for you. I try to use dark layout because I prefer it that way. Uh, but yeah, if you have any problems, uh, let me know. And then we can we can see if we change, change to the black and white with the black or white background instead of my reverse white and black. Uh, perfect. I think that's fun. So uh, we're going to do this in the vision of the Bollinger Band Reversal, which is a strategy that most of you may be familiar with and how we approach the levels there. So for that, the first thing we do is, well, I always go to the monthly chart because my process is you always go from the higher time frame to the lower time frame. You have since, even if you are trading, let's say in the five minute charts, uh, the zones about the monthly zones or things like that are zones in which you have to be mindful if you are reaching that or you are in a zone like that there. Mm -hmm. Then the, the dynamics become different. So it's always important to know your zones from the top to up to the level in which you are in which you are trading. So I usually try to get one or two zones per time frame as we go down, and then I either refine them or uh, keep them like like so. So the first step is I always like to have clean charts. The only thing I have here, as you can see, are the period separators. So in this case, each one of these periods is one year. Uh, and right now, the only one I have is fractals, which is uh, just a simple indicator in MT4. And most platforms have it. In TradingView, they also have it. It's basically just telling you the high point and the lows uh, whenever there is uh, a, like, uh, it could also become pivot points. But basically, it just helps you visualize tops and bottoms uh, in the price uh, easier. So that is the basic thing. Uh, that they are done for, and they are used for part of the analysis because they will help you identify easier some of the of the zones in or places in which you can place. Your zones. So that is the first step. Then the second step is we go from this bar chart to a line chart because the line chart will show you only the closest, and then with this you can see okay here is the top, but here are the closest. And the first thing I do is. I start from the closest and I see, okay, here we have a pretty clear area. I will, uh, just for showing you, I will increase the, the girth of these lines just so they are more evident. Uh, you usually use them pretty thin, uh, but just it for the sake of showing you better so you can see them better, I will make them fat lines this time. This time. So we have here a pretty, pretty evident line. We can see here we have uh, Close here, a close here, a close here. So we have many touches. My basic process is I want a zone or an area to have at least two touches. So the minimum we want is two touches. Let's let's tie like here. Uh, two touches. Make it big. So we want two touches. And while we take into account information in the past, we always think more valid about the present because we are humans, we have a recency bias, we have a bias in which the most recent information is more important. So we take that into account in here. And while we take into account the past, the present, it's always the prevailing uh, case. In here, we can see that I started this line. Uh, I'm going to move it back again to the point. Here we have pass, we have one touch. We have another touch about this area, another touch. So once these two were right here, it already became a support resistance area. In this case, it was a resistance. But in this case, we can see that we had several touches, one, two, three. We can count this as a false break. Uh, we will see later how to define how wide an area should be. But for now, we just put a line where it is pretty obvious that there is a zone. Uh, like here, we have many touches around here, and it broke. Then now it touched back again. 
then here we can see that it broke. Now it's pulling back to there. So that is a really important zone. Many touches in the monthly chart. So that is the first step. So the first step is we also define these ones. And OK, we have here one. And now let's find another in the top. So we can either say, OK, in this case, we have here a touch, touch here. But in the present, we have touch here and break. So it may be, but it's not that important at the moment. So for my top in this monthly chart, I will actually say that it will be more closer to here, where we had one touch, two, three, and then a touch here. But this is the monthly chart. So if you are a real long-term trader, this will be the zones you will be caring for. And this button here, one, two, three touches, pretty important. And maybe this one, uh, you will not care that much. So this will be your three main main points. Then from there, I go back to the weekly, and then we can see more granularity of the data here. So in the weekly chart, we can see here that our other area was, OK, so now this. While our main line is here, we can see that we have here many so touch, 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 but they are higher. And then now in this case, I go to the, to the bar chart, sorry, to the candle chart, candlestick chart. And then we can see, OK, while many closes were around this area, many of the candles either penetrated or went farther away to this area. So for that reason, I'm telling, OK, so my zone will be about here. So this will be my, my zone. Uh, maybe we can extend it a bit here. But I, I tend to say that this weeks as false breaks. So in this case, OK, this is my zone now here because you got these touches, these touches, these touches, these touches. And then you can see that it's still all within there. And then here we have, oh, sorry, wrong button, uh, a touch here. So, OK, so because it came back after it broke, it become now support. So this is my area. And then, OK, I validated, OK, this was my area here. It was a pretty important zone. So what happens if I extend the areas? Uh, whenever we break a new zone or resistance, I always see uh, what happens, right? OK, if we don't have anything here, OK, we had this before. Now it extends it. Is it respecting it as before? And we can see that in the press, well, I will say present in this area last year and this year. Uh, we, we have here in 2017 break, touch, then it continued, then it returned. It used it as support in this area, all the whole area. In this case, it's a pretty big area because we are in the weekly and in the monthly chart, it is a pretty relevant area. So it is a pretty big, uh, big zone. So that, that's why this is so wide and so and so big, because we are looking at the higher time frames. And in this case, the volatility around this area was pretty big. And then we returned, and the volatility is still big, and there were still rejections. But at the last uh, three months of the past year, we saw it coming down, and then the volatility died. So now this is still a supporter balancing area now. Well, uh, it was supporter resistance balancing area. So once we were in this point, uh, actually no, a bit more. Like once we were in like in this point, uh, December two thousand and eighteen, I started to say, okay, now this has started to die down too much. So now instead of this just being a support or resistance area, now I changed it to balance zone because it's been so long waiting there, uh, several months without moving much, that now if I want to trade long term, I could still use it for a break. For example, we have a break here, then a pullback. So I could still use it now that it broke down uh, in the past months to try to take a long term downtrend. But we see that the market is not moving that much. Compare it to these times here before. Market move here, then bend down. So in a whole year, you had pretty wild moves from uh, around uh, 1,045 pips. And these, in almost one year, you have only uh, 350, more or less, pip movement, uh, or, or 450 movements. So that is significantly less than 1,000. So we are seeing that the market is a lot less volatile. So now we have to nail down. Even if I'm a long-term term trader, I would like to look into small, like short opportunities, and that is why now we go one time frame 
lower in our analysis. Uh, so this is like the main area. And in this case, this is like, we don't really have much incentive to look at other zones uh, past this. What we could do is just uh, the bottom part define uh, a range. So now we have this. Uh, so the bottom part, you could say that this is about this tight range because we had touch, touch at the bottom, touch, touch at the tops. Then we had here and then in balancing zone. So we can have that. So I will remove this and extend this. So these are our support and resistance areas for the Euro USD in the higher time frame. I will delete these lines just to make things clearer. And then we go down again to the next time frame. So for most of the cases in the Bollinger Band reversal, for example, uh, we recommend using the weekly time frames. So the zone side place would be basically how you will uh, use them. And now we, that we it is like this. Go further that we kind of want to touch on now, which is, are the zones in high time frame more strong or more reliable? Can you answer that? And I, I think I have a few thoughts on this too, but can you kind of give an answer on that? Yep, I will go back to the weekly chart. And in general, the higher time frame zone will have more importance than our lower time frame zone. Uh, because the higher time frame zone, it's usually where larger players like big banks and that will try to place either their strike prices for options or for other type of deliveries they have to do, or that will defend because the longer the time frame, the same as stocks, the, the more money you can put into that area or zone without it uh, moving that much. So there will be more players in that place uh, than in a smaller time frame. So compare like this zone like here versus a uh, 15 minute zone. So in this zone here, uh, there will be some players, yes, going in and defending this zone, uh, but compared to this zone, you can see that this is a meaningless amount of price action or movement uh, compared to the larger, larger picture. So it always depends. Uh, I always say the highest time frame has the highest importance, but the lower time frames are also valid and important in communicating you maybe more the short term moves, or in this case that we have a more constricted price action. Uh, even if I'm looking at the weekly charts, I wouldn't want to be targeting this for the next few months. I would want to be targeting maybe, uh, I don't know, like 100 pips or so instead of, or, uh, instead of 500 pips in the next month because of the low volatility we have had. So in that case, I would prefer to go into a lower and I will take into account more the lower zones because we have been in this area for so long that now I just take it as top and bottom in a lower time frame, right? So it depends on the context. So that's a good point. So I, I feel like there's going to be more activity at the zone if they're on higher time frame, but it doesn't mean that's going to move in your favor all the time. So it's just going to usually move a lot. There's going to be some move, but it doesn't mean it can target the next zone and go far and that price will be move in your favor. So you got to be careful. So they are more strong, but not more reliable, if that makes sense, I think. Yeah, exactly. It's not about reliability because all zones can break. Uh, also, you think about reliability, you have to define what you mean by reliable, right? It means that it is held more often than not. Uh, of course, the lower time frames will be held less times than the higher time frames just because there are so much more amount of charts in there that the, the odds will play out uh, more, right? So that is just uh, that. But for me, they are all valid. It just depends on what is your time horizon and also what is your context. So for example, if I'm trading this chart, if I'm trading this chart as such, then I will probably st will stand to play for several months, uh, like try to take a trend like this for several months uh, in this type of context. But in this type of context, then I will try to make like a smaller term, maybe like a one month thing, like trying to just get from here to here or from here to, to here, right? So. It will be based on the context, you will expect different things from the market because right now it will be unreasonable to expect in the next month a move like this in the market. It, it will not be something that based on what you're seeing here, you could expect. Uh, 
uh, if you are seeing this here, then yes, you could expect some big moves, but uh, it's all context dependent and also the zones and how strong they are also are context dependent. Cool, perfect. So right now we are like going, okay, now as we see here, we had this larger zone and now this larger zone in a, in a smaller time frame. Uh, this for all of us, for example, when for the whole past year, this was basically a bullish zone for the Bollinger Bands uh, reversal system up until around here. I think a team had it a bit tighter uh, than me. I prefer to put them a bit wider just because of the way I, I trade. And also because once I come here, I sometimes do analysis into a lower time. So in this case, it is too constricted, so I don't like it. Then I will go a lot down. And then we can see here, okay, we have a bottom here and a top here. And if you see the, the box, or let's say the box of my uh, my support resistance area now, in this lower time frame, actually shows us pretty good the support and resistance zones in this lower time frame, this, uh, this daily chart. So I will mark them and I will put them in a different color. And then sometimes I go and do the same process. We are here, okay, touch, touch, touch. So more or less about here would be my zone uh, because we have these touches and these touches. And then I go back with the candlesticks to confirm how volatile things are. We're going to do an, a quick analysis for another chart. Uh, we had a request for gold, so I'm going to do that uh, for other people. But I also, before that, I want to look very quickly to uh, to the Japanese gen, so because they have a different uh, parameter. So I will put this in blue, so it is easier for people to see. So we have here, I, I will start it from here. Uh, this is our zone. And then we have here some doge, and come here, pulse break, doge breaks and it keeps closing near uh, this zone. Then it touches, touches, touches. So this will be more or less my, my zone um, inside this area as my top or my resistance inside this area. And then my support would be around here. Uh, again, I will probably start classifying it this. I will have defined it until here because until then, we were looking at the higher time frame, and then we saw the price was constricted. So once I what we were like in these parts of December 2018, I would have started it. So I will take into account this part, but I will just put it here, okay, since when I would have defined it as my area. And then the bottom part, uh, I would also have defined it around the same time. But if you see, we are still using the same, the same principles. Uh, the main base is we require Right, and buttons. Uh, two touches of the zone. So here it touched here, then it broke, it pulled, and came back here. So that is even better than whenever it's just touching here and then it goes away. Uh, because now we know that it is, whenever the price breaks it, it changed role from a support to resistance. And it's not just a, a support here, for example. We had a support, 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 support. Up until recently, it broke down and had act as a resistance. But before it was only support. So all up until here, until this place, we only had it as a support area. Now it's broken. Now it is a proper support and resistance. Uh, it's still holding. So for example, right now, based on this context, now that it broke again up, uh, I would be looking with the Bollinger Band reversal strategy to only take longs in this price and in this zone, because now it has broken up and then it is pulling back again into this zone. So it could be a fast break. Yes, that could be. But my basic concept, like the most basic analysis is at least two touches from the second touch, I can define it and then I extend it. And the volatility uh, will determine if I uh, need to widen it or not. So for example, in this area, it will have been up to here. Now that it broke, okay, that's a fast break. It continued breaking. Okay, maybe we need to extend it a bit lower because the volatility has increased. Uh, so that is also one where I think they are not static, they are evolving. Uh, support and resistance areas are always evolving with time and with price action. Uh, in this case, yeah, right now we, we, we just change uh, the role of this uh, support and resistance area. During this period, it was a resistance area. Now it's a support in this lower time frame. But again, since the price, price is constricted, 
the most we can expect is to go back uh, up to here, which is 302 pips. And that would be in a period of more than one month uh, movement, unless we have really violent news that built it up. So that would be how, how we go. We start from the higher ones, which help us define two zones. In this case, the weekly ones, the weekly zones were the same as the monthly, but then now we're going to change to the daily. Now, one zone for the weekly became the two zones. The top and the bottom of that zone became the two zones for the daily. And we can continue going like this time frame by time frame. And the important thing to note is how they relate to each other in terms of, okay, so the price here, if you see, uh, if you see here, yeah, in the four hour time frame and even the one hour, it touched, touched, then it broke, tried to hold, it failed to hold, now it's coming back again to this area, right? So what is a daily support now, uh, like here you can see a transition of it trying to break, it was still a resistance here, resistant, resistant, and then it's support again. But now even in here, we can go to the one hour time frame and then, okay, now this area, it's actually an area like this. If we see the closest, we have close here, we have closest here. And if we see the weeks, then uh, we have weeks, here, I will change it to another color. Uh, we have weeks here, all the way to here, and closes here. So it also gives us that that zone. So uh, while some traders may like to have like pinpoint accuracy, so for example, this line, if you sold like let's say it breaks down and pulls back to here, and you put an order here, then that will be great. But you have to understand that the more you want like to get like into the pinpoint, it's the harder to get into a trade. So while it is possible to do it, because as you see, many of these lines actually get almost tortured, tortured within a few pips, uh, it is always recommended to think of as areas and then you understand the trade-off if you want to start in the beginning of the area, like the lower part or top of the area, then you have either better reward to risk or better probability of having your trade triggered. So I will, I will read the comments to see if there are any questions. Yeah, so one other thing just to recap people is that you look at the zones on a really high time frame, like the monthly chart, the weekly chart, and then to look at the size of the zone, you look at lower time frame. Yeah, exactly. So the first step is we go from the higher time frame. I wasn't to not write it in notes, but I will just recap it. Yeah. So you go from the higher time frame, and we start deciding the zone. At that point, since I don't trade the higher time frame, I just have it as lines, uh, as a single line. Then I go to the lower time frame and see, okay, how volatile we have in the price in this area. So that now becomes a zone. And since in this case for the Bollinger Band reversal, my main zone is the weekly chart, then I will go that. Now, uh, if we were just in the Bollinger Band reversal and it was like this type of scenario, then I would not go lower because this is already good enough price action for me to take trades. But now since the market is so constricted, I go lower and then I continue doing the analysis here for the volume of bank reversals. Uh, for my other trading, I continue doing this type of analysis and I just go lower and lower and lower doing exactly the same process and see which are the so because as you can see here, for example, this hour for hour zone here, it's also basically the same zone for the 15 minutes or the five minutes. Uh, it's not longer valid now, uh, but we could come back to here. So in last, like in the last three time frames that I am looking at, uh, the zone remains the same zone. It's just valid. So it just depending how lower you go in time frame, you can make it tighter maybe uh, because you have these pulses here instead of uh, that wide, right? So also as a general rule, the higher you go in a time frame, the wider your zone will be because there is more price or more spikes uh, in this type of, of move. So compared to but yeah, this is the weekly one, and then compared to the daily one, they are a lot tighter, the daily ones, than the weekly ones. So this is awesome, because I do my zones differently, so having you explain that way is pretty interesting, even for myself. So if you have yeah, any questions, think... chat. if you have any thoughts, just make sure you comment there. Or a question how, how to do things, what we are looking at, also you can comment, and we'll, we'll touch that in a few seconds. Yeah, exactly, okay. and I think that, Based on the sounds that you have been using for your daily for your weekly reviews, 
we had pretty similar zones, but mm. uh, it's just sometimes I prefer to go into lower time frames. Like in this case, I think your zones for the Euro USD are are different, right? They are like more or less like here. Uh, one zone is around here, right? They're uh, so are you, you're on a weekly chart, monthly chart. Which chart, I think right? weekly chart, right? Yeah, I think you use yeah, the weekly chart. Like you, they're, they're pretty much the same because now, now we're outside the zone. In my case. Okay. Yeah. So your zone is more the top part, right? So it will be yeah, yeah, yeah. more like this, I think, because yours yeah. was a bit tighter than mine. Yeah. Yeah. So they are pretty similar. I just expanded it a bit due to the volatility in the recent times. Uh, but in my case, right now, my Bollinger bands, I am actually using these zones, the blue ones. Because I saw the price is too tight, so I went into lower time frame. Uh, one thing to consider is that you may not get as many good trades in this one because you will not have that much running space as, for example, we had here in the past. These years were really nice because you had you had a rejection create a good move, and now you have a re rejection just like meh one week and then come back, and then meh another week and come back. So it's always the market context uh, at previous exactly. right? And if you guys wonder what we mean by Bonjour and Reversal, because we've been saying that a few times, the Bonjour and Reversal is a strategy that I and other people I know as well trade. So we have people, we have both you and I trading this, but people in the academy trading the same thing. And it works well, you just got to learn how to do it and then apply it to yourself. But it works really well. Yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll put some the description for that if you guys want to learn more about this. But uh, that's what we've been doing so far. Okay, he, uh, here we have uh, RB asking how the top zone can be a zone if there is only one touch in the line side, in the line uh, chart in the daily. Uh, we don't have one zone. I just, uh, we have arrived at it late, but I just started doing it here because I said that from this period, I decided to go lower into the time frames. But if you see it here, you go to the past, we have here one touch, two touches, three touches, and then Another touch here, another touch here, and if we go even more back, we have other touches around this area. So there are several touches, just the, the way I put it here, because I extended it from here, but I marked it and said that I'm marking it only since the point I changed it uh, into, into that level. And also, you can see that the, the, while the closest are useful for a quick look and identify the most obvious zones or areas, uh, I always use the wicks because it's really important to know if there was a penetration or a touch, uh, even if it's just a wick, because that, that tells us something. It tells us that at least it touched the zone and then it was defended good enough that it moved the price back again before closing inside. Uh, so that is, uh, that's why, I, yeah, I see that, that, that answered your question. Awesome, awesome question, by the way, it's good. Yeah, I will now go to a Japanese gen chart uh, just to show what I meant with uh, weeks. For example, this week, in this case, I would basically ignore this week because it was a flash crash uh, compared to, in these cases, for example, this week, I will still take it into account because it repeated several times around this area in the weekly chart. But for this, uh, it's like it was a flash crash and it this week was literally uh, like two or three months of price action in the last time it was, we were around this, this area. So in this case, I will take this week as, I will ignore it almost completely in my analysis. So uh, how much time we have left at the end? Uh, we'll have about uh, like 10 minutes left or so. Okay, so I will do a quick run about just in this chart and then I will go to the goal that someone requested at the beginning. So I will not change the colors in this case. I will just do it uh, the same process, uh, but faster. So in this case, the monthly tells us something, but it just tells us that we are in a zone here, here. But we're going to be looking at the weekly now. So we have a touch here. Didn't like it. Uh, we have a touch here. We have a touch here. We can extend. We have a touch here, a touch here, a touch here, a touch here, and then touch here, touch here. So that is my preliminary zone, like pretty quickly done. And then the top, uh, we have here, here, here. We have many touches. So we have a touch, touch, touch. Probably we have to increase it because it's white. Then 
this is like my preliminary summaries. Uh, sorry, go up to here. And we can see that in this case, okay, maybe this actually will classify as a break of this area and go down. So I will want to tighten it in here because here we see, okay, it went down and it touched with the wicks and then it came down more. So I will classify this more as a break. Then we came back into it. And with this wick, we ignore it for these purposes, but the other wicks, we take it into account as, okay, it touched around here. So we are right now in the Japanese yen at a weekly major support area. We had gotten pretty hard hammering into the area, but we are right now in a weekly uh, area. So this area would have been defined like this uh, only after this, this touch. So like we're around here, it will have been defined because we had these touches here, but the real, like, we only really had the two touches properly after here. So we had one touch here and then one touch here. This touch in the past that I use, it's only validation. Uh, but we had one touch, then a weak touch, and then this one was a proper touch with a close. So probably I would have had a different zone uh, in the lower time frames in the H1 for this area. But for this one, I will have it here. And it started from here until here, the validity of the zone. And here at the top, we have some other touches, but these are wider. And then we have one touch, two touch, three touch. So until these touches, we will have said, okay, this area around here is top, it's important. And then after we had this price movement here that it stayed there and that, okay, so now this is a whole area. So instead of being maybe just the top like this, so this whole zone, it's, uh, it's an important uh, support, sorry, resistance zone. And uh, it has been resistant zone for a, for a while now. It's been two years and it's still not broken. Uh, so it came back here, then it broke. So here we have flash crash. And then now we have here, so if we go to the daily, we can see like, okay, while we have these zones here, we could go into a lower, uh, into lower zone. So we have here one touch, 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 touch. So we could define here as a, uh, within this context as a minor zone, uh, uh, taking into account that the major would be the, the weekly. So we have, okay, so we have around here a zone, which in this case it's minor. And then we have the weeks, okay, so the weeks tell me that maybe it's a bit wider here. And here it was a break, trying to break, and then it finally broke. So I'm not sure if it will be like a this in this case or wider. Uh, why? Because we had here in the past, pretty nice, but now we have more volatility. So I would say that maybe up until here, it will have been this tight. And then in this last part, I will have it maybe a bit wide. And for the support, the support would actually be still the same because we still have the same. We still have not broken that other context. So this will be like how I would do the zones for, for the Japanese gen. And I will probably go with the, these two major zones, uh, my major zones for the Bollinger Band. I think the TN actually has exactly the same zones. Um, based on the two touches theory or, uh, rule, I would actually say that for next time we go, this will be an intermediary zone because we are already having two touches here, uh, touch one, touch two of the zones. So this could become an intermediary zone uh, in the future. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the future due to the two terms. Uh, but the main oh, one yeah. would be the top here. Yes, but I noticed that the this is a yen, right? So the yen tends to kind of compress and do smaller yes. and smaller zones over time. So that's kind of normal. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I mean. Like this would be like the, the purple one would be like the main ones. And then this blue one could be like, okay, if next time we see that it's reaching here, we could start taking uh, short trades around here because of the compression of the zones that we talked about. Exactly. Uh, and also, based on my rules, basically my rules needs two touches, and then after two touches around that area, that's a zone, right? So here we had some touches, so you know, but it's just like less uh, uh, major, major, minor, or or not that. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, if there are any questions, please post them in the chat, and we will try to answer them. I will go to a pretty quick uh, gold. Gold is. Same. Um, so we had someone, I forgot the name, uh, 
uh, uh, hash saying that gold always confuses him. So let's see how confusing we can how confused we can get with gold today. So in this case, we go to the monthly and we can see a really clear zone. We are actually right now in a important area in the weekly. Uh, I am going to skip the first step of just writing this the one line and making start making the zones. Uh, just because it is faster that way. So we have here touch, uh, then here it broke, but here here touch touch. This probably was a weak touch. Uh, I forgot to put my fractals. Uh, put the fractals. Yeah, this was a weak touch. Touch 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 here touch here touch here touch here. We are right now here. So in the weekly, this is uh, right now our resistance. The sorry in the the monthly. Uh, then I will make this large. So like this is this, and then here we can see that, okay, yeah, we have pretty much the same uh, touch, touch, touch. But since it's a lower time frame, then we could say that, okay, either this, all this zone is our resistance area. So we could expect some reversals of gold in the near future because of the zone we are in. Uh, or we can say that, oops, um, we can say that we have like this bottom here and this top here. Uh, what I will actually prefer since we are still in the weekly to go, okay, uh, we have, in this case, I'm going to go from present to past. So touch, 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 touch. Okay, so. Due to the compression of the price, which we have seen in most assets in this uh, this past year, so I would say that this is an important support now for the price, and the resistance is actually still here. But in the weekly, I would say that maybe we can tighten it a bit like like this because we have some weeks, some penetrations here, so that will be a bit uh, wider on top. But at the bottoms, we see that there is a minor support here uh, too. So we will say that here we have this uh, with a touch, touch now. We have some touches here in the past. And then we have here. Then if we wanted to go to the daily chart, then we will see what we saw before, which is this. This will become a, uh, a minor support in this context. Uh, it will be a minor support. So in this case, uh, be okay. So back here, around to the touch, and then up to the zone here. So as you can see, they overlap. In this case, we have these the major support resistance area, which probably would have been wider, and then we have the weekly ones, which in our context would be the major due to. Uh, how we are looking at it. We look at the monthly only for reference, and then we look at the weekly for our main guidance. And then, so we have here basically our major air support, sorry, resistance area, major support. This major support could be a bit wider based on this history, but recently it has not been that wide. And this that we were fast broke in recent times, just penetrated it completely and then broke, would be our uh, like minor uh, support. Uh, so it will inform more shorter templates in this in this context of, of swing trading. And then if we go back, if we go to the four hours and the one hour, we can see that our daily support and weekly resistance uh, are still the same validness here. We just have it like for example at the top or the bottom of, of the support and resistance areas. And if we go back like, even lower, we can see different areas based on time of day and that. But this analysis we're only uh, doing like this. Uh, if you have, I don't know if Etienne has any questions or would like me to clarify something else. This looks a bit more messy, the chart. I will kill this. It's less yeah. messy. Now it's less messy. I'm glad we did this. I think this is a really good way to look at the zones in the chart and kind of also simple to understand. Hope you guys like this as well. Let us know your thoughts in the chat. And uh, we can answer a few questions for now. Like we have a few minutes more. But uh, let's see if you have any question or not. 
Yeah, you have some questions about the process or something like that. Yeah. Uh, it so would be a question from Alex. Alex asked, when does the zone stop yeah. being valid? I think you can cover that. Yeah. Um, most of the times, zones don't stop being valid. They just change relevance. So for example, if we go here to the, to the Euro USD, uh, this zone is still valid, but it became, instead of a zone in which it, we have rejections, strong rejections, it became basically uh, the whole uh, like container for the price, right? For the price action. So in this case, this whole zone loses some relevance in my trading because like, if I'm short all the time here, then I could still make some money, but it, it didn't break until here. So most likely you will have been long all the time here, even though the price was compressing. Uh, if you were just like using this as a support to resistance area, so it will have been a support from this price up until probably around this break. Uh, but if you go to a lower time frame, then the context changes. And now you have like triggerable, like tradable or triggers. So for me, it's not more about being valid or invalid, but it's more about when do we break the zone. So for that, I will actually go to the past and do another zone here in the past uh, that was that was broken and then maybe not respected anymore. So the around this area, uh, I was quickly just looking at this part. Uh, so around this area, we can see that we have another zone, which it will probably have been defined up until up until here uh, because of the touches. So we have here a touch, then it breaks, touch back, then touch. Okay, so here we have it. And then in here, it will be, uh, Coming into here, it will be a resistance area, and then it will have broken, and then it becomes support. But if you still see, it's still relevant after several years of it happening. Uh, but here, we just violated completely the zone. Like, it didn't care at all about this zone uh, in this price movement. That may happen sometimes. And if this happens, that is why you have to have in your system, for example, the Bollinger Band reversal, uh, we have, it has to have an engulfing bar in our side, right? So something that tells us that it's likely to move, but there is no guarantee that it's going to reverse. Sometimes it just slams the price and breaks it like this. And sometimes it will just be, okay, it comes here, come back, it comes here, it come back. And that's what I say that some zones will remain relevant or you have to pay attention to the future, but see more what is happening in the present because the past, like most of the times when there are zones, you could have the same, define the same zone looking at the past instead of waiting here. So for example, if we haven't seen this area here in the past with these touches at bottom here and this, and define this area more or less, then we will have to have wait until we have, okay, we have one touch here, one touch here, one touch here, one touch here. So up until here. So we will have spent one whole year uh, in this context uh, to create this zone we we'll have to have waited basically almost one whole year to define this area. While if we use the past, uh, uh, we could have defined it roughly uh, before that time and then started trading it. Uh, but it's more about when it's broken. I like to have the, is it obviously broken uh, framework? Uh, that's, that's my framework. So for example, here, this is the end of my zone. Uh, in the weekly chart, I will delete the smaller ones just so it's easier to look at. Okay, so here, is this obviously broken in this candle? Let's go here. Is this obviously broken in this candle when it closed here? Not really, it's just a bit broken and it could come back. Uh, but once we are here, okay, now it's more obviously broken. And definitely here, it was obviously broken. So at any of these points, you could have said, okay, now it becomes uh, resistant. Now it's broken. Now it changes the role that it was, it was using it on. Now I change the, the action. But I tend to do it in a more like, okay, this is my two. Yeah, this is my standard zoom in the charts. Uh, is it obviously broken or is it kind of like a penetration or a week like this? So up until here, it was not obvious for me that it was fully broken. I may have decided here because it was two weeks already closing below, but in this like this candle here, okay, that is obviously broken. Now it changed for me uh, 
its role as an area. Uh, does that help answer your question, Alex? I think that makes sense. So it's about kind of you deciding when the zones are not valid or when they, they change, and then I think this and that. Yeah, exactly. And I don't, I, have, uh, I don't have a fixed PIP rule, but for example, I know one of our students, Sam, Samuel has some rules like he has, okay, if it is between within 20 to 30 pips of my lines that I place at my top and bottom of the zone, then it's still valid the zone, right? Once it passes those pips and you close it below X amount of pips, then now it's not. Uh, but I prefer to, instead of having a fixed pip, to use it by context, because the breaking here, for example, this break, like this kind of close here, in this context in which we have really strong projections, would have been enough to tell me that this zone has been broken. Because we stopped having the big rejections. Instead of having a big rejection, we closed. While in the past, every single time it, it went here, we had strong rejections, right? So even if this one is not as big as this difference, like from here to here, it is relatively tight, I would say, yes, it's broken. Why? Because this is such a strong candle up and it closed there. While in this one, it was okay, it's a turn kind of down, but if you see there are many touches here and we have been closing around here, so it's not enough for me to decide. It's not enough for me to decide because we have had this yet, but I know it's weakening, so I'm looking to a weakened a structure. And then now it's here, okay, that's definitely, there is no doubt it's broken. Uh, while in here, I would have said most likely, okay, in this candle, this is broken. And if I hadn't, then this candle is like definitely broken. So it's for me, it's more context in everything. Perfect. So good feedback from you guys. We appreciate it once again. Uh, we'll wrap it up here for today. I'll be going live once again tomorrow at approximately the same time, maybe a little bit earlier. And we need to cover part two of the Making a Living Trading series. So part two is going to be about capital to trade. That's going to be tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe. Uh, click the bell next to the subscribe button. And we'll catch you back here tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Anilo. It's been a pleasure. And yeah, we'll catch you guys tomorrow.